That song brings back memories. Ace Nation, I am long time. Ace member, fan member, and independent wrestling supporter, Robert. Crossroads 11 was a wonderful, was an awesome show, and my first Ace show in two months. Let's get underway with the results. We kicked off the show as former partners went at it as Ricky Richards defeated the seasoned veteran, Mike Donovan. Up next, we saw tag team action as the Lucha Gods, Ultimo Maya and Black Zemis defeated Hollywood Enterprises, Mike Orlando, the elite athlete, and Absolute Alvin. Up next, uh, in another battle of, uh, I guess, former partners, Andrew Tiny Johnson defeated Hollywood Enterprises' William Wyeth. Then, in a uh, six-way matchup, Prince Akhenaten defeated Aaron Bradley, Kenny Bangle, Joey the Aviator Adams, the rogue Anthony Gangone, and Sonny Kiss to become the new Fight for Flight champion. Then we saw uh, Rob Vegas defeat TNA star Eric Young to retain the Diamond Division Championship. Uh, at that point, they, the show went to intermission. After intermission, um, Hollywood Enterprises' good guy, Azriel, defeated the returning Arcadia. And boy, did I miss hearing E-Town Concrete's baptism. Up next was the Chance of a Lifetime Rumble, which was won by Anthony Ramirez who is or was known as FNB in the movement. Other participants were Jabal Jackson, Lou Torres, William Wyeth, uh, another member of Hollywood Enterprises. He didn't quite get his name, but he's tall, bald, has a big, long beard. Um, Too Hot Steve Scott was in this mess. The King of New York, E.C. Negro. There were two guys whose names I didn't get. I know there was 11... Comp- um, oh, actually, there was one guy, I keep forgetting his name, he is, or was, one half of the Middle East Connection. Mm, I forget who, who else, but it was like 11 men in all in this match. Up next, uh, Tommy Dreamer challenged uh, TJ Marconi for the heavyweight championship. Uh, at first, Dreamer appeared to have won the title, but due to uh, referee Ryan... Being sandwiched in the corner, Shady Torres came out to make a three count, and Marconi had his foot on the rope, and Ref Ryan and it said the match had to continue, and Marconi took advantage, and he ended up pinning Tommy Dreamer. After the match, uh, Dreamer got a hold of uh, Brooke Danielle and gave her a pile driver. Up next, then it was uh, time for a final for a uh, rivalry a feud to be put to rest as Puerto Rican powerhouse Astro Morales defeated the Devil's Outlaw Stockade in a very grueling casket match which saw the use of a punching bag brought into play, cinder blocks, green mist, carpet strips, and bloodshed. And eventually Astro put Stockade in the casket and closed the lid. Where do both of these men go from here, I wonder? Now, as time as a personal note, so it was great sitting with uh, Ace's historian, Adolfo. Uh, glad he made the show. Great seeing uh, Shady, Cheyenne, Ryan Peterson. Wish I could have talked to Mike Morgan, but I know he was probably busy running the show. Duh, who else can I remember? I, I bring back the rogue Anthony Gangone. Uh, during the fight for flight match, Kenny Bangle like fell in, in the seats right next to me. Good thing Adolfo had gotten up earlier. Yeah, a lot, a lot of pretty women in this crowd. <sighs> Probably all got boyfriends, or husbands, or children to take care of. <sighs> ah, Mike Morgan, I wish you would bring back Russian roulette. I was hoping. You would do that for the Fight for Flight uh, match someday, since that particular concept is never in a one-on-one match. It's always a three-way match, four-way match, five-way match, six-way match, possibly an eight-way match someday. Now, yeah, well, here, here's some memorable quotes for you. Oh, this guy's got a notebook. You're going to hate me. Prince Akhenaten, right before the fatal... I'm sorry, Fight fight for Flight uh, title match began. He tastes like Rogaine and her ass. Tommy Dreamer after biting T.J. Marconi. 
Um, I wonder what took so long to let the people in the building because it was quite a line and um, like long after, it was after 7 p.m. and the show didn't start at 7.30. Well, 7 p.m. they didn't open the doors. <laughs> uh, now that one guy that was sitting a few seats away from me with the hat on, I hope you're sitting next to me someday for a show, pal. Like I'm already, I'm already following you on Twitter and I subscribe to your YouTube. Uh, what else can be said about this great show? Oh, here's an, I, even though I didn't write it down, here's another memorable quote. Thank you for coming, Robert! Astro Morales says he was celebrating his uh, victory in the casket match. Um, hmm. What else can I say here? Ugh. Well, Ace Pro Wrestling returns Saturday night, December the 5th. Um, don't know if they, they, they title the show, but I would definitely, for a match wish list, one match I do like to see would be Jamal Jackson against Anthony Ramirez. Uh, maybe a rematch between Arcadia and Azriel. Don't know who newly crowned fight for flight champion Prince Akhenaten will have to defend against. I think more tag teams are needed in a in Ace because you know Donovan and Richards are no longer a team. Lucha Gods are the champs. Hopefully, more teams will be created. And don't know who's, who could be next for T.J. Marconi or Rob Vegas. <laughs> Damn it. Hmm. What else can I say about this? Well, I, I kudos to the to Mike Morgan for getting such a huge, probably the biggest crowd he ever that I've ever been a part of in the Morgan Jr. Arena. And uh, I guess that's probably the reason why the why the they now have the commentators positioned above above the ring to accommodate more fans, unless they unless they're not going to stay in the, stay in the skybox for the for the future. And. Well, I guess that's pretty much it, but even though their next show is Saturday night, December 5th, I could say one thing. As far as Ace Pro Wrestling goes, 2016, look out.